Welcome back. This session is about transmission control protocol. So we will have an introduction on this topic in this session and the details will be covered in the forthcoming sessions. As an introduction, the TCP or the transmission control protocol was specifically designed to provide a reliable end-to-end -end byte stream over an unreliable inter network. As you know in case of internet, the network layer provides a connection less service, unreliable service, right? But our application may urge for a reliable delivery. But in that case, how to convert this connectionless or unreliable service provided by this network into a reliable one? Yeah, there comes the significance of our transmission control protocol, which is a part of this transport layer of internet. So an internet network differ from a single network because different parts may have widely different topologies, bandwidth, delays, packet sizes and other parameters, right? Yeah, it's a heterogeneous network, a collection of heterogeneous networks connected together, that is our internet. So different networks may have different topologies, bandwidth, etc. And our uh, data how to travel along all these heterogeneities, how to cope up with these things. The TCP was designed to dynamically adapt to the properties of the internet network and to be robust in the face of many kinds of failures. Such a reliable uh, design is there with the TCP. Now, each machine supporting TCP has a transport entity. So, where this transport entity will be there? It should be a part of this transport layer, right? So, where it actually resides? It may be either a library procedure or it can be a separate user process or in most of the case it will be part of the OS kernel itself. So a transport entity may be either a user process or it may be part of our OS kernel or it may be a separate library procedure. In all cases what is the function of this TCP is to manage the TCP streams and interfaces to the IP layer. So actually TCP treats this data as a byte stream, sequence of bytes, never a single logical data unit, it treats as a sequence of bytes. That is why it uh, uh, gives a sequence number for every byte. So you remember in the case of TCP, every byte in the data stream will be uniquely numbered using a sequence number. And the TCP entity accepts user data streams from a local process. From an application process in case of the sender machine, it takes data from an application, then breaks them up into pieces not exceeding 64 KB. That is the maximum size of a data unit that can be handled and sends these each piece as a separate IP datagram. Everything, every piece will be attached with a header and it will be provided to the network layer. It, there it will be converted into a separate IP datagram. And for simplicity, we will sometimes use just TCP to mean either the TCP transport entity that is a piece of software which perform all these functions or the TCP protocol itself that is a set of rules. Okay? In both cases, we use the term TCP and based on the context, we have to identify whether it is a protocol, whether it meant the protocol or it meant the actual software piece. And uh, coming to the service model of this TCP. TCP service is obtained by both the sender and receiver creating endpoints called sockets. So if you want to get the service of this transport layer or the uh, TCP, at the corresponding layer we have to create an endpoint and those endpoints are actually called sockets. So in socket programming you will learn how to create socket, how to bind the socket to some ports and all, you will learn. So each socket has a socket number that is the address consisting of the IP address of the host and a 16 bit number local to that host which is called port. So every socket will be identified uniquely using a combination. What are the different components? One is IP address of the machine and second one is the port number which identifies the user process. This combination together that pair indicates the socket. So actually communication is between two different sockets, two different endpoints. One end we have the sender machine's IP address and the corresponding application's port number. At the receiver side, destination's IP address and the corresponding receiver application's port number. 
these are the server sockets and sending socket and receiving sockets so a port is the tcp name for a transport service access point for tcp service to be obtained a connection must be explicitly established between a socket on one machine and a socket on another machine so as you know it provides a reliable delivery which is connection oriented so before any sort of communication between the sender and the receiver their sockets must be connected a connection should be established between the sender socket and receiver socket and the socket may be used for multiple connection at the same time and the same socket may be used for communication with the different machines different endpoints two or more connections may terminate at the same socket that's another word for that connections are identified by the socket identifiers at both ends that is socket 1 socket 2 so a single connection will be identified by this pair of socket socket 1 is the sender machine socket and socket 2 is the receiver machine socket this is the connection id so port numbers are 16 bit numbers local to a particular host and which re represent or which specify a particular application process and there are a set of uh, port numbers which are reserved for standard services we will see some example for those this for example this port numbers 20 and 21 are reserved for ftp for file transfer 22 is reserved for secure shell uh, that is used for remote login replacement for telnet etc and 25 port number 25 is reserved for smtp mail service like that a set of uh, port numbers are already reserved for standard services so those numbers we cannot assign for our user processes so these are actually called well known ports the port numbers below 1024 are reserved for standard services and these types of services can usually be started only by some privileged users like uh, routine unix systems and all we cannot directly assign those numbers to our user processes and these are called actually well known ports and you can see the corresponding list of well known ports in this site you uh, visit this site iana.org internet assign numbers authority it's an actually an organization which assign all these ip addresses to different host and uh, numbers for autonomous systems all these uh, assigning purposes are done by this uh, authority that is iana you can visit that site and we can see all those numbers for different autonomous systems and all and this list of well known port numbers also will be there in this site and over 700 uh, port numbers are already reserved for or assigned uh, for standard services and 1000 uh, up to 2023 we cannot use for user processes from 2024 onwards we can assign for user processes now about a tcp segment the sending and receiving tcp entities exchange data in the form of segments so corresponding to each layer we will call the corresponding data unit as a, a particular name right in case of ip or network layer we will call it as a packet data link layer we will call it as a frame right like that in transport layer we will call it as segments a tcp segment consists of a 20 byte header it is fixed part a 20 byte header part is fixed after that some options may be also there as part of this header it will be followed then followed by a zero or more data bytes so data is not a mandatory part in some some control information or acknowledgement and all this data part may be missing that is why it is now say that uh, followed by zero or more data bytes and the tcp software decides how big segments should be so based on the network and all how uh, the, what can be the maximum size of a data segment that will be decided by this tcp software it can accumulate data from several writes into one segment so depending on the maximum size either from the application process it can combine many messages into one segment or maybe if uh, the application data is very long the tcp software may split the data from one write into multiple segments and two limits restrict the segment size there can be a minimum and maximum for any segment right yeah first each segment including tcp header must fit in the ip payload this is the maximum uh, payload or data part that can be there in a ip datagram so data part of the ip datagram is the transport layer data unit right yeah that is the data part for ip payload 
so there is a restriction that this should be the maximum size of a transport layer data which can be accounted as the payload part of the data packet in IP layer so this is the maximum size of a segment second each link has an MTU like that if you are sending the data over a link definitely that link have a capacity right yeah, that is also put another restriction on the maximum size that we can call it as a maximum transfer unit the link will specify that this this much amount of data only can i can uh, handle at a time you remember this uh, packaging right yeah we have the application data you remember this packaging right yeah we have the application data received from the application layer that act as the data or payload part for the transport layer and the transport layer attach a header part here this header and the payload together is called the segment okay and this segment act as the payload for the ip network layer right yeah this data part of the network layer is the segment transport layer segment and it attach its own header in the network layer so the ip header and the segment that is a payload part together act as the payload part or part or data part for the data link layer right the frame inside the frame this data part is actually the ip datagram so in each layer or each level we have a restriction on the maximum size for example network may impose a maximum size for its payload so total as uh, segment size there is a restriction imposed by the network layer like that the link also impose some restriction maximum payload that can that i can afford is this much okay that is actually the header part of the ip layer plus this payload which is actually the transport layer payload plus transport layer header so based on that the segment size should be designed properly so these are all about uh, introduction to this uh, transport layer protocol tcp and we will see the tcp header format and all in the next session thank you